First of all, by heartly obeisance and in the lotus feet of my Parmaradhatam Guru Padma Nitya Lila Pravishtam Vishnu Padra Sutta Sashmat Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami and same into the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru Nitya Lila Pravishtam Vishnu Padra Sutta Sashmat Bhakti Vedam Swami my dear Sannasis Prabhupada Vaishnav and Vaishnavita <coughs> Yesterday in our class, we explained up to Raya Ramananda Sambhal, but it was not true. So we want to begin from Raya Ramananda Sambhal, Sarvatharamana Parityajyamami Ekam Saranam Braja, Aham Tvam Sarvapapya Pyo Moksha Shyamit. Mahaprabhu told, Oh, it is outer. Something go, go on. Why? Here, Sarvatharmana Pratyajya Mami Ekam Saranam Praja Aham Tam Sarva Pavapabha Moksha Ishyami Maa Shucha. Arjun is fearing somewhat that I have done some offense, power. So, Krishna is telling him, don't worry, I will but excuse your all sins. It seems that it is bhakti, but it is not bhakti, sarnagati up to sarnagati, not more than that. And sarnagati is not itself bhakti, but it is the door of bhakti. Without Saranagati, you cannot enter in the realm of Bhakti Devi. So Saranagati is needed first, and then Sramadam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, and all other will come. So Mahaprabhu rejected this and told, Oh, tell more something. And then Nani Maharaj will speak. Jnani Nirandasya, coming here. Jnana Anjana Shrakaya, so that I can hear. Chakshuran Militangena, Tasmai Shri Gurved Maha, Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Vedanta, Saminiti Namine, Namam Vishnu Padaya, Radhikaya Priyatmane, Shri Shimar Bhakti Vedanta Narayani Ki Namane Vancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripasandha Vyayavacha Putitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Of my humble obeisances of the Lotus Feet of my Diksha Guru Shri Shimar Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada At the Lotus Feet of my Shikshan Sanyas Guru Rupa Nugavara Shri Shimar Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj the Lotus Feet of our Rupa Nuga Guru Varga, 
I offer my obeisances to Vaishnavas present, headed by Chidandiga. So, Sri Gurudev is uh, very kindly taking us through Rai Ramananda Sambad, which is the uh, most important conversation in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now, Sri Gurudev has just explained, Sarvadharma Parichidya, Sri Ramananda Roy is taking Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through gradual steps. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually doesn't want to hear about Sharanagati. He wants to hear about Radha Bhav. But he's asking, what is the highest perfection? And Sri Ramananda Roy is coming up step by step, step by step. Sometimes when we begin devotional service, so we think if I have Kantimala and peace and I'll chant Hare Krishna 16 rounds and I'll go back to the spiritual world and be a gopi. Just by rituals. Like Varnashram Dharma. Like rituals. But no, we have to have some connection with Krishna. So then we understand, okay, I have to do something with Krishna. So maybe I'm doing cow protection or book distribution or prasadam distribution or something like this. Offering the results to Krishna. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, no, this is also not enough. So that we understand, oh, it has to be spiritual. Oh, then I'm giving up all material activities. Sarva Dharma and Parichitya, Mame Kamra. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, this is also external. Oh, bhakti. Oh, I have to understand what is bhakti. And then reading through all the books and, oh, this means this, this means this, so I have to do this, I have to do this. Like the Ritviks, they hear all that diksha means that by which you become purified and you get divigan. So if we read Prabhupada's books, we can be purified and we get transcendental knowledge. So we can get diksha just by reading Prabhupada's books. This is an example of false, false understanding. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, Natshotsini Kamshati, Sri Ramananda Roy suggested after Sarma Dharma Parichitya. So we have to come to the Brahman platform. Samasarve Shri Bhuta Ishu, Madhbhaktin Labhate Param. So we're getting bhakti. After coming to Brahma Bhuta platform means understanding what is spirit, what is matter, becoming completely free, purified, and then coming to the level of bhakti. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is no, this won't do. Eho Bahya. This is external. Because as long as the bhakti is mixed with jnana, as long as I'm struggling by my own endeavor, this is ridiculous. It's like supposing I go to school and the school teacher says, okay, today we're going to learn about French grammar. I say, wait, don't tell me. I'm going to figure it out myself. <laughs> I can't figure it out myself. I can't figure out what is bhakti. I don't know who is Krishna. I don't know what Krishna likes. I have to hear. So now, Sri Ramananda Roy, he comes up with the next uh, prescription. Jnane priyasam adupasyana manta eva. You have to throw away, long distance away, all this jnana. Ah, jivan kisanmu karitam bhavadiya vartam stane stita shutigatang tanu vanmano bhir je praya so jito jito apitrais jilokyam. So he's saying you throw out this uh, knowledge, jnana, and you hear from pure devotee. Tanuman Manopia. There are different levels of meaning here. So it's saying that one who acts in this way, he can actually conquer the Lord, although the Lord is generally urgent. He cannot be conquered by anybody. So superficial meaning is that you've just been talking about this knowledge, knowledge of spirit and matter. Throw it away. It is useless. Simply hear from the pure devotee. Stane stita. You don't have to change your ashram. You don't have to leave your wife, leave your children, leave your husband like this. And go and live in an ashram. Stane stita. You remain where you are, but you hear from the pure devotee. This is first meaning. Second meaning is that throw out all jnana. All tattva jnana. So then devotee may say, hey, wait a minute. If I throw out all tattva jnana, then how can I understand what is Krishna Consciousness? How can I understand how to practice? Means, Sri Ramananda Roy is saying, throw out all extra efforts to attain that Vidyam and simply hear from the pure devotee. Simply come to uh, Villaggio San Paolo and hear from Srila Gurudev. 
Don't worry about doing other research. Gurudev is giving us all the tattva gyan that we know to, that we need to know to progress on progress on this path. Even going further than that, uh, throw out the knowledge that Krishna is even the supreme personality of Godhead. My Guru Maharaj, Sri Gurudev has said, your Swamiji he came to the West to teach you that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. And I have come to teach you to forget that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Means that when we hear from Tatvigya, Brajrasik Vaishnava, and his beautiful moods enter into our heart, this will actually float out the knowledge that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. I have to uh, offer obeisances to him with all awe and reverence. And gradually, gradually, those moods, Braj moods, will come in the heart. But. If we try to practice this artificially, just coming to the movement six months or nine months, and then we say, oh, Krishna's a black sheep, we don't care for Krishna, we only love Radharani. Big offense this is, will be there. Actually, Ras means, just like, uh, Namami Sharam Satchidananda Rupam. Krishna is little, tiny little boy. But he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But still his mother is chasing him and tying him. If we don't know that he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but Mother Yashoda is chasing and tying, then no Ras. This is not Madhur. <coughs> Madhur Ras means that we know he's the Supreme Lord, but still the Braj Basis, they don't know, and they're performing these very, very beautiful intimate pastimes. Then, <coughs> Tano Van Manopia, offering obeisances. Tano, we're offering obeisances to the place where we're bringing our bodies to this place. On planes, on boats, on buses, in cars, in vans, hitchhike, cycles, anything. But we're bringing our bodies to this place, offering our obeisances to the sacred place where this Harikata is being spoken. And van, also we're glorifying the Harikata, just like Gurudev says. After uh, Navadip, for example, Parikrama, you go back and you tell everyone, oh, it's a very wonderful festival. Just like Five Star Hotel. And food was really, really super excellent. And Harikata was beautiful, so we're glorifying. <coughs> and the Manopi, remembering, Gurudev says, don't go back with empty pockets. Take what I'm take, take what I'm saying, put it in your pocket. And when you get back home, bring it out and remembering when chanting. So then one who performs like this, uh, then he can conquer the Lord. Although the Lord is Ajit, but Krishna is Bhakta Bhatsala. And he likes to become subservient. He likes to become dependent on his pure devotees. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he heard this, he said, oh, hoy, this is okay, but you can go further. Are they? Why go further? Because this is the beginning of the process, but no guarantee that the person who's practicing like this has actually reached perfection. So then, Nano Pachara Katipuja is saying that as long as food and drink, when we're, off, when we're eating, as long as there's some hunger in the stomach, then we'll be hungry, we'll, be, we'll want to eat, there'll be satisfaction. But after your sixth ice cream, for example, oh, no room, I can't take any more, no need to eat anymore. If the belly is full, then there's no satisfaction in eating. So when we're performing bhakti as a matter of faith, but without spontaneous love for the Lord, Krishna is attracted somewhat, but not completely. And the devotee is also not fully satisfied. So then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is eager to hear more. Then, uh, Ramananda Roy says, Krishna Bhakti Rasabhava Tamati Kriya Tanya Dikatopi Labhyate Tatra Loya Mapi Mulya Mekalam Jan Makoti Sukritiyana Labhyate My Guru Maharaj, he started our Krishna Consciousness Movement and he said he took this phrase, Krishna Consciousness, from this Krishna Bhakti Rasabhavitamati. This is spontaneous love for Krishna. This verse describes spontaneous love for Krishna. So therefore the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is not the International Society for chanting 16 rounds and following four regulated principles. But it is the International Society for Ecstatic Braj Bhakti. And Srila Gurudev has come to teach us this. What is the price? She, Ramananda Roy is saying, if somewhere or other, 
This is available. Go and get it at any cost. Sell everything you've got. Everything. And you get this one thing. Oh, what is the price? Tatral Nolia Mapimulia Mekala. Intense greed. So Srila Gurudev says that uh, rag bhakti starts from ruchi. A ruchi means taste. And Srila Gurudev has also explained that when ruchi is very mature, then devotee is getting some glimpse of saru. So then greed is coming. Then greed is coming. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is becoming enlivened. Oh, more. But this point describes spontaneous love like Swacha. There's no stai bhav yet. Love for Krishna. Sometimes the devotee is attracted when he hears about the pastimes of Krishna with the gopes, with the cowherd boys. How they're playing in the pasturing ground. How Krishna is putting his lap on their thighs when he's tired. And they're fanning him with palm leaves and singing beautifully. And the devotee thinks, oh, these pastimes are so beautiful. I want to serve Krishna like that. And then when he hears about Mother Yashoda, how she's feeding Krishna, sometimes chastising him because he's naughty, looking after him, always worried about him. Oh, this love is so wonderful. If only I could love Krishna like this. And then sometimes, hearing about the gopis, how Krishna himself cannot live without the love of the gopis. When he's playing on his flute and the gopis run into the forest, why? Because they hear that Krishna is dying without their association. They're running to save him. Oh, these pastimes are so beautiful, but not fixed. So staibhav means that the actual uh, nature of the sarup has become manifest and now the devotee has knowledge, realized knowledge, what is his relationship with Krishna and he's beginning to perform in this way. So now Ramananda Roy will explain about spontaneous love. One shloka, nana upachara. This means, this is devotional sort of like Vaidhi Bhakti before coming to the level of spontaneous bhakti. And then Krishna Bhakti Rasabhavitamati means spontaneous Braj Bhakti. Very good. Thank you. Let's play again. First of all, I offer my Sastang Dhanabad Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, Asmadeva Paramaraja Tama Guru Pada Padma, Om Vishnu Pada Shtotara Satasi Sima Drupana Vachari Varya Shri Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Secondly, I offer my pranam at the lotus feet of my Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara and I offer my pranam to Ananda Chirani Padgan and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So, Srila Gurudev has ordered me to uh, describe in brief the continuation of the conversation between Sri Roy Ramananda and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the bank of Godavari. So far, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has responded with Eho, uh, Eho uh, uh, Bhaiya. This is external. He said external to all things until he heard about Prema Bhakti, which is attained by Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti or by Raganuga Sadhan Bhakti. Now he's saying, not Eho Bhaiya, this is external. He said, Eho Hai. This is all right. But he did not say, this is good, not yet. He's not uh, feeling uh, full satisfaction yet. 
And the reason is because his question was, what is sadhya? Sadhya, what is the goal of life? So describing a process to attain a goal, this is not the goal of life, it's a process. Whether it's Vaidhi Bhakti or Raganuga Bhakti. And especially, none of the suggestions so far given by Rai, Rai Ramananda were Sarup Anubandi. That means directly dealing with the Sarup of the Jiva. Mukti Hitpanyatarupam Sropena Bhavyastati. The goal of life is to become situated in one's eternal, transcendental, spiritual form in a particular type of relationship with Sri Krishna. Whether in Dasyabhava as a servant, a friend, a parent, or a beloved. So thus far, Rai Ramananda has not touched any of these things. So Mahaku said, it's okay, but Agi Kor, go on, go on. So now, Rai Ramananda said, it was a verse spoken by Durvasa Rishi. After Durvasa Rishi was chased throughout the universe by the Sudarshan Chakra. And he begged Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva and even Lord Vishnu, please give me shelter. No one could protect him. Because even Supreme Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan, could not protect him because Lord Narayan was, his heart was controlled by the love of Ambarish Maharaj. So finally, Durvasa had to go back to Mathura, fall at the feet of Ambarish Maharaj. And when Ambarish Maharaj prayed, then Sudarshan Chakra disappeared. At that time, Durvasa Rishi said this verse. He said, oh, that person whose very name purifies everyone of all contamination. That person whose very feet, upon touching the ground, make that place into a holy tirtha. If someone has become the das, the servant of that great person, then what on earth is there left for that person to attain? They have attained everything. So by these words, he glorified uh, Ambrish Maharaj, and this verse particularly says, Dasa Nam for those who are the in Dasyamud, servants of the Lord, what is left for them to attain? When Chaitanya Mahal heard, heard this, he said, Eho! Hi, it's okay. Again, he did not say, This is Uttam, this is the best. He didn't say. Why? Because in Brindavan, Shantaras, the neutral mood, is latent. And in Brindavan, the next highest mood, Dasyabhav, is also not pure. There's no pure Dasya Bhav in Vrindavan. Hanuman has pure Dasya Rati for the lotus feet of Lord Ram. Oh my Lord, you are my servant. I am your servant, you are my master. But in Vrindavan, no one has this mood, Oh Krishna, you are the Supreme Lord, I am your servant in Vrindavan. This mood is not there. Nanda Maharaj has some servants. So they may say, Oh Krishna, you are the son of my master, but you are not my master. Nanda Baba is my master. And so the servants of Nanda Maharaj, they have a mixture of friendship and also parental love towards Krishna. So because there's no Shuddha Dasya in Vrindavan, Mapu said, Eho hai, this is okay. Agi K.O.R., can you go on? So then, Sri Rai Ramananda, he said, hmm? Itam satam brahma sukhanu buddhya dasyam gatanam paradayavatena maya sukhanam naradarakena sadam vijaru kritapunya punja. Very beautiful verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. It was spoken by Shukadev Goswami when he was remembering how. See, Krishna has a small boy. He's playing in the forest with his friends, Subal, Sridam, Dam, Vasudam, Arjun, Labanga, Stoka, Krishna, Madhu, Mangal, Dasi, Kokil, Bringa. Many friends, all small boys, playing in the forest together. Sometimes they wrestle. When Krishna, it's time to wrestle, Sridam, he may defeat another boy. And all the boys are clapping and watching. At that time, Krishna becomes eager to join into the fight. So he enters the circle of the friends, pushing them aside. He said, the earth is trembling. I scatter the clouds in the sky with my trunk. I <coughs> strike fear into the hearts of all in the universe. Sridam, you are like a trembling, timid deer. You should flee from the wrestling arena. Because now, 
Sri Krishna, the formidable, the invincible, war elephant has entered the arena. And in this way, bragging, Krishna enters, slapping his arms and jumps on Sri Dham. And they begin to wrestle. But Sri Dham is very strong and he overpowers Krishna and puts Krishna on his back. And all the boys are clapping and Sri Dham stands up to receive his applause. Jai Jai. At that time, Krishna also stands up to receive his applause. I am the winner. Jai Jai. The boys are shaking their heads. What is this? You are completely defeated and you think that you are the winner? How is it so? Krishna said, I am the winner because hmm, my nose was facing up and Sridham's nose was facing down, so I am the winner. <laughs> Sridham said, oh, you are not the winner, I am the winner. And Sridham took a handful of dust and threw the dust on Krishna. See, Krishna took a handful of dust and threw on Sridham and they began to throw dust at each other. At that moment, Hmm? One Brahma Gyani, who was that? Durvasa. Durvasa Rishi, he plays the role of a Brahma Gyani. He was wandering through the forest and from a distance he saw these boys playing, arguing, throwing dust on each other. And beholding the beauty of Krishna, he was struck with wonder. Adbhut Rasa. Hi, how beautiful. Who could imagine? that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is quarreling in the forest and throwing dust at, with his friends. He was astonished, seeing the beauty of Sri Krishna as an ordinary cowherd boy in Vrindavan. There and then, he became overwhelmed by Sattvic Bhav, trembling, became stunned, and he just sat down, cross-legged on the ground. Then Sri Dham, he said to Krishna, Hey Krishna, look, there's one Baba over there. He saw our fighting. He can decide whether I am the winner or whether you are the winner. So then, along with their friends, Sridham and Krishna, they approached that Baba with a long, he has Jata, long dreadlocks in his head, Jata in his beard. Everyone is afraid of Vyasa Rishi. Hmm? When they see him coming, they go away because he's powerful. He becomes angry and he can give a curse. But very playfully, no fear at all. Krishna came to, to the Rasa, Hey Baba, Baba, you saw the fight, tell him I was the winner. Sridham said, Oh Baba, just tell him, settle our argument, tell him that I was the winner. But the Vasu is sitting there, many sattvic barbs, tears coming from his eyes, cannot speak, gut gut. His voice is choked. So then Krishna, he sits down on one lap of Durvasa Rishi and pulls his beard. Hey Baba, Baba, are you deaf? Hmm? Sridham sits down on the other knee, pulls his other beard from the other side. Baba, Baba, are you dumb? And they're pulling his beard. Tell him I'm the winner. No, I'm the winner. I'm the winner. Hmm? Like this. Then Krishna began to laugh. And the Vasarishi felt himself entering into the mouth of Krishna. He entered into the mouth of Krishna and there he saw the causal ocean, Karnadak. Causal ocean, millions and millions of universes floating like bubbles in the ocean. He thought, I want to go back to Vrindavan. So he flew through space and entered into one of the universes. And he was looking for Krishna, but he could not find him. So he came out of that universe and went to another universe. And for millions of years he was searching throughout the universes, but could not find Sri Krishna. After millions of years he heard a laugh, haha, and he came out back from the mouth of Krishna and was sitting in Vrindavan. It was only one second later. Tuvasa Rishi was astonished. Krishna got up and Sridham got up and they were walking away. They were friends now, they put their arms around each other. Oh, this Baba knows nothing, let's go and play. <laughs> the Vasa Rishi saw Krishna and his friends walking away. He said, hey, who could imagine that this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Remembering this pastime, Shukadev Goswami overwhelmed with ecstasy. He said, Itam Satam Brahma Sukhano Buddha. Those people who are Brahmavadis, they think, who is this Krishna? Oh, by chanting his name, then one can get Brahma Sukh, the happiness of Mukti, the liberation. Huh? And those who are in Dasya Bhav, they think, who is Krishna? He is the great Supreme Personality of Godhead. And those living entities who are in Maya, they think, who is Krishna? He's just some ordinary person, any historical person. They don't believe he's God. So all of these three, they're all very unfortunate. And they cannot understand that some fortunate living entities 
after accumulating mountains of Punya, mountains of Sukriti, they play with Sri Krishna as the, his best friends daily in the forest of Vrindavan. And Shukadeva Goswami was in ecstasy. When Ramananda Roy described this to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu said, Eho Utam, this is wonderful, this is the best thing. But I can't explain so much. I want to finish. <laughs> Mahaprabhu said, Eho Utam, this is wonderful. Go on, can you go further? Then Ramananda Rai, he meditated and he said, Nanda ki makarad brahman, sreyameva mayodaya, yashodava mahabhaga, papo yasyastanam hari. He said, higher than this friendship is the love of Nanda and Yashoda. Nanda Maharaj, what did he do to become the father of Krishna? When he returns from the uh, cow sheds during the day, in the evening, then baby Krishna, he runs to get the wooden shoes of Nanda Baba, placing them on his head and comes running to his father. Oh Baba Baba, here are your shoes. God is serving him in this way? How astonishing. And Madhi Shoda, even more. She can bind Krishna with a rope from her hair. And the Supreme Lord who gives mukti, liberation to everyone, he cannot free himself from the rope of love of Madhya Yashoda. Hmm? She has no idea that his Supreme Lord, one day, Krishna was playing with his friends at Brahmanda Ghat. Hmm? At that time, the friends of Krishna told Madhya Yashoda, Oh, your boy, you know he's eating dirt? Madhya Yashoda said, Really? I'll teach him. And she came out from the kitchen, down to the bank of Jamun at Brahmanda Ghat. She said, Oh, Lala, are you eating dirt? No, Mother. But your friends told me, my friends, that they have made a conspiracy against me. They have told you this, so you'll be angry and you'll twist my ear and they will laugh. Hmm? Madhya Shoda said, let me look inside your mouth whether or not you have eaten dirt. So Madhya Shoda took Krishna on her lap, looked inside his mouth and she saw unlimited universes. And how was she? Not like Durvasa. Oh, and not like Arjun. When Arjun saw the universal form, he became afraid. He was trembling. He said, oh, Krishna, please forgive me. I said that you were my friend. I called you Saka, Yadav, other things. Mm, but you are the Supreme Lord. So she was not like Durvasa. She was not like Arjun. How was Madhya Shoda? She held Krishna tightly to her breasts. And she began to pray, Oh God, Oh Lord Narayan, by whose illusory energy I think that he is my son. Mm, and Nanda Maharaj is my husband. Oh God, please, be merciful to my son. What am I seeing? Am I dreaming? Is this a vision? Is it caused by a ghost? Maybe it's caused by a ghost. Perhaps someone has done tantra on my boy and he's haunted by a ghost. That explains everything. Now I know why he goes door to door stealing butter. <laughs> why he's so restless. Okay, I know what to do. I'll call the local priest. So she called Bhaguri Rishi, Shandila Rishi and the local priest said, My son is very restless. Can you do some jagya and chant some mantras to, flee him, to free him from any inauspicious influence? They said, Yes, of course. You should bring some cow dung and some cow urine and smear him with cow dung and cow urine. It will purify him and we'll chant mantras and then he should be okay. So Madhya Yashoda, he, she followed the orders of the rishis and they began to utter mantras to God to protect this small boy. And Madhya Shoda smeared Krishna with cow dung and cow urine. And Krishna was standing there covered in cow urine and cow dung and thinking, well, that's the last time I show my universal form to my mother. <laughs> Krishna's Aishwarya just doesn't go down very well in Vrindavan. So, Ramananda Rai, he quoted this verse, Yashodava uh, Mahabhaga, what did Madhya Shoda do? That the Supreme Lord who maintains the universe, she thinks I have to maintain, maintain him with the milk from my breast. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, Eho Utam, this is fantastic, this is wonderful. Adi K.O.R., can you tell more? Ramananda Rai, he meditated. Then he said, Nayam Sriyanga Una Tantara Te Prasada Swayoshi Tamnalina Gandaru Tam Katonya Rasut Savasya Buja Dandri Tikanta Ya Labdisham Ya Udagaj Braja Sundarinam. It was a verse spoken by Uddhav. When Uddhav came to Vrindavan, he said, The Prasad, the mercy, the grace that Sri Krishna gave to the gopis of Vrindavan. 
It was never given to Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune. It was never given to Rukmini or Satyabhama. It was never given to any demigoddess in heaven what to speak of the ordinary women who are beautiful in terms of worldly estimation. What did Krishna do? Krishna put his arms around their neck. He was saying, Bhuja Danda. Danda means a stick. Krishna's arms were straight. What does it mean that he embraced them around the neck with his arms being straight? It means that during Rasalila, when dancing was going on, oh, when Radhika, one ankle bell fell from her ankle, what does Krishna do? He thought, oh, this music is not so sweet without the sound of my Radhika's ankle bells. He stopped playing. He was searching in the grass. He found the ankle bell and placed it back on her feet. Well, he was dancing with gopis and he approached them and he took his pitambar and he wiped the perspiration from their faces. He wiped the perspiration from their breast. His pitambar became reddish with kumkum from their breast and he colored his own heart and looking into their eyes as if to say, you have completely dyed my heart with your anurag. And see Krishna with straight arms, put his arms around the neck of Braj Gopis. When does someone embrace with straight arms? Those who are parents, they know. If a child comes and sits in your lap and reaches up like this and says, Daddy, Daddy, Mommy, Mommy, then the parent will say, What do you want? <laughs> it's a request. In other words, Krishna was begging from gopis. Oh, gopis of Vrindavan, I left you, I abandoned you alone in the forest, but I'm begging you, please, never abandon me, because I cannot live without you. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, Eho Uttam, this is wonderful, this is astonishing. Aki K.O.R., can you go on, tell more? Rai Ramananda said, no one ever asked me to go higher than this. No one asked me to go higher than this. But as you've asked, then I will tell something. Hmm? Ramananda Rai said, in the Vishnu Purana, there it is stated, Yatha Radha Priya Vishnu Stasya Kundam Priyam Tata Sarava Gopi Shusevaika Vishnu Atyanta Valabha I have glorified the gopis of Vrindavan, but amongst them, the highest and most glorious gopi, her name is Sri Radha. We see in Srimad Bhagavatam that during Rasalila, Sri Krishna disappeared. And all the gopis were searching for him. And as they looked on the ground in the forest, they saw his footprints. And next to his footprints were the footprints of another gopi. At that time, they said, and Roy Rabananda quoted the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Anaya radito nunam Bhagavan Hari Ishwara Yano vihaya govinda prito yam anayadraha The gopi said, this girl must have done the greatest worship of God. Why? Because if someone worships God, their desires can be fulfilled. And her desire has been fulfilled because the cowherd boy Govinda has left all of us, left all of us to be alone with her. So Ramananda Rai said, so Radha, she is the topmost of all gopis. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, this proof is not a waterproof. It is not completely certain that she is the highest gopi on the basis of this verse. Why? Because here in Rasalila, Krishna took Radharani alone, hmm, without anyone else seeing. So it may be that there was another gopi in the group for whom Krishna had more love, but he didn't want to upset her, and that's why he took Radharani alone without anyone seeing. Hmm? So, only if Krishna would take Radharani alone, in the presence of all the other gopis, only then can I believe that really Radhika is the topmost gopi. So then Ramananda Rai, he meditated. And then he quoted a verse from Git Govinda. Kamsari api samsara vasana bada shrinkala radham ridaya adaye tachaja braja sundarim. Hmm? That once during Santa Ras, during the springtime Rasalila, Krishna was playing among so many Braja Gopis. And Radhika was late. Finally, when she arrived, she came and Krishna saw her from a distance. And the moment Krishna saw her, Radhika turned around and left that place. At once, Krishna thought, Oh, now I have made a great problem for myself. And he got up in front of all the other Gopis and went into the forest in search of Radhika. 
Itastatas tam anusritta radikam. Ramananda Rai quoted another verse. He said that Krishna searched for her, but he could not find her. He wondered and wondered until he, he no longer had the strength to search for her. And he sat down alone in the kunj on the bank of the Jamuna and began to cry. What have I done? I have made an offense to my Shrimati Radharani. Now she became angry and she has left me. Hari Hari Oh God, oh God, what will happen to me? What will she do? What will she say? When will I have the chance to meet her again? Without Radhika, what's the use of my wealth? What's the use of all my cows? What's the use of Nandagaon? What is the use of my very life without Shimati Radhika? When Mahaprabhu heard this glorification of Radharani, he was astonished. Hmm? Ramananda Rai said, This love of Radhika is so special. Aheri Vagatin Premna Swabhava Kutilabavet. It never moves in a straight line, but it moves crookedly, like a snake. Hmm? So then, Mahaprabhu said, this is so wonderful. Can you tell me more? Rai Ramananda said, Oh, I cannot speak anything. What, the words coming out of my mouth are inspired by you. You are inspiring me and as you are inspiring me, I am speaking. Mahapu said, No, I am a Mayavadi sannyasi. I am completely dry. I don't know anything about bhakti. It is only by the mercy of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, who is the topmost Vaishnava, that I had the chance to have your association. Kiba vipra kiba nyasi sutra keninoi ye krishna tattva veta say guru hoy. If anyone, whether they are sannyasi, grihastha, vanaprastha, brahmachari, whether they are vaishya sudra, brahmin, katriya, whoever they are, if someone knows the krishna tattva, then they are guru. So please tell me about Krishna Tattva. At once Ramananda Rai, he became absorbed in Krishna Tattva. He said, Brinda bane aprakrita navinamadan kama bija kama gayatri jara upasan In this world there is a cupid that cause, causes all to fall in love with each other. But he is a demigod. In transcendental Vrindavan, there is one Cupid, and that is the son of Nanda Maharaj. He inspires a prem in the hearts of all the gopis. Purusho shikiba starra jangam sarvachitakashak sakshat manmata madan. What to speak of attracting the females? He attracts males. What to speak of males and females? He attracts every moving and even non-moving living entity like trees and creepers. And therefore he is the Aprakrita Kamdev. And he is worshipped. Kam Bij, Kam Gayatri, Jara Upasan. By chanting the Kam Bij and the Kam Gayatri, that Krishna is worshipped. And Roy Ramananda began to explain how each of the 24 and a half syllables of Kam Gayatri is one part of... Divya Surup, the transcendental form of Sri Krishna. How beautiful he is and how that Krishna, he is the embodiment of all Ras Akhilas Rasamrita Murti Prasimaraya Ruchi Rudha Taraka Pali. How in Brahma Samhita, Roy Ramananda said, Lord Brahma stated, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratipa Vitabis Tabiya Eva Nija Rupa Tayakalad. There in Vrindavan, there is Radhika. Radhika is not different from Krishna. Radhika is Sri Krishna's own Ananda Shakti, Ladini Shakti, in personified form. She is so beautiful, so attractive. Her surup is astonishing. Mahabhava Chintamani Radhara Surup Lalita Risaki Tarakaya Vyuharup Chintamani can fulfill the desires of a person. But who can fulfill the desires of Krishna? Radharani is the Mahabhav Chintamani. She is made of love. And she is the Chintamani gem that can fulfill all the desires in the heart of Krishna. And all the gopis, beginning with the Lita Vishak and others, they are only her Kaya Vyuha, expansions of her form. And see Krishna as a dear Lalit Nayak. He enjoys pastimes with the gopis of Vrindavan. Mahapu said, Eho Utam, this is fantastic, this is wonderful. Can you tell me more? Yes. Rai Ramananda said, Indeed, there is one more topic 
But I cannot quote any verse from Shastra to describe this because this is beyond the Veda Vedanta Upanishad and all Shastras. It is called Prem Vilas Vivarta. When Mahapu heard these words, he put his hand over the mouth of Ravananda Rai. Hush, very confidential. But when Mahaprabhu took away his hand, Roy Ramananda began to sing verses he himself had composed. Yunjan Adri Nakunja Kunjra Patei Nedu Tapeda Brahman Chitraya Apisandarandayad Iha Brahman Daham Odre Buyo Bi Navaraga Hingalabarai Sringara Karu Kriti Speaking this verse, Roy Ramananda said, Radhika said that how did my love begin? It began with a glance. See, Krishna glanced at me, and at once my love was awakened. And day by day it increased and increased to such an unlimited extent. Now it has no limit at all. When I meet with Sri Krishna at that time, I forget. Am I the beloved of Krishna and he is my lover? I forget everything. It is as if Cupid has taken the shellac of our hearts and melted them together with the heat of our perspiration and we've become like one. And Kamdev has decorated the palace of the universe, causing all to be struck with wonder. In other words, when the maidservants of Radha, Radhika see her beautiful meeting with Krishna, then Yavadashrai Vritti, all the feelings in the heart of Radhika, they're transferred into the hearts of Rupa Manjari and others. When Mahaprabhu heard this, he, was, he said, yes, this is sadhya, this is the topmost thing, this is the goal of life. But, sadhya vastu sadhan bina keho nahi pai, kripa karo kaharai papara upai. You have told me about the highest goal of life. Now, Roy Ramananda, be merciful to me and explain to me what is the process to attain it. More? So we will hear from Srila Gurudev, who says to attain the goal of life. Ramananda is solving all the questions of Mahaprabhu. As if Mahaprabhu does not know anything. <laughs> but what, from where Raya Ramananda have all these knowledges? Oh, Mahaprabhu is the ocean of rush. And unknowingly, he gives all these points, Rasa Tattva, so much highest that he told. Especially Pailahi Rag Nayagin Bhargam. Naso Ramani, Naso Ramani. This is actually Madanakha Bhav. Topmost Bhav, Lalita Abhisaka has not, even Krishna, up to Mahabhav, not. And for this reason, to uh, test all these things, he became Chaitanya Mahabhav. Now, here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and he wanted to taste Radhaya Pranayama three reasons. But now how he came? There should be one uh, Guru, Siksha Guru. And for Siksha Guru he came to whom? Most dear uh, Sakhi of Radhika. So he came and that Sakhi knows all the mood of Radhika. No one knows. Only Lalita Vishakha. Here Vishakha knows everything. So, in mood of Radhika and to test the Radhika mood, he came to Siksha Guru and then he learned everything. But really it was from the heart of or Osan of Raf Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After this year, 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, what is the way, process to have this high class of Then Sip Raya Ramanan told, only there is one way. And that is, in the guidance of if anyone, in the guidance of gopis, they will think that I am gopi, Krishna is most beloved, and this way, meditating their Siddha Swaru by the grace of Guru who can, you can be received. And by that, Smaranam Krishna, Smaranam Janancha, to whom you have grieved Krishna and also Lalita Vishakha and others. Go on meditating. In this way, in the guidance of gopis, you can have this highest class of prayer. But you cannot touch the Lalita Vishakha and Ratika Mur. You can know Valdi. You have no qualification to go up to there. Valdi Anarpita Charim Chirat Kurmaya Mahatma. Valdi in the guidance of Rup Manjari you can serve. So Mahaprabhu became very. For this reason I came to you and now I am successful in coming. Oh, I want that you should give up this governorship of Pratapabuddha and come to Jagannathpuri and we will discuss all these Saraswati. And really he did so. He sent a resignation letter to Pratapurudra. I don't want to now serve. I want to serve now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So please relieve me. And then Pratapurudra told, if you are coming to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then I will give same salary as I am giving. And you should come and serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> then he designed and then he came and in Gambhira Raya Ramananda and also Sarup Damodar. They used to oh, inspire Mahaprabhu with these moves and their moves. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to move south up to Kanyakumari and he was telling, making question of all those who come to him. Thousands and lots of persons used to come to him. And he, oh, Amarat Gai Guru Haya Taro Ye Desh. You should tell Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Nam to others and they will tell to others in this way whole south became Vaishnav. Again he was searching his brother. Very wisdom. He knew everything. But as his pastimes, he went to Pandharpur and discovered Vishwarup was here. And he has now taken samadhi. He is now no more. And then hearing he returned from there. <coughs> when he was coming, Kala Krishnadas Brahman was serving him, taking his commandalu door open. One day some Bhartari, the <laughs> this is so this when Mahaprabhu has gone anywhere 
to beg bhiksha. At this time, this boy was alone. So some of the Barthari came to him and saw a very beautiful girl and told that if you will come, we will give marriage to you, this very beautiful girl. And he was at once, he forgave Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was so many days with Mahaprabhu, Swain, Bhagavan, hmm? Lords of Lord. And, and he came in lust. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned back, he saw that, oh, where is Krishna Das? Where is Krishna Das? <laughs> then he knew, oh, Bhattari has taken him in their trap and in their group. When Mahaprabhu went there, oh, they began to beat, tried to beat, but they were quarreling themselves and Mahaprabhu choti and trapped. And then he kept something, some days with him. And then his name became Kala Krishna Das. Black, Kala means black, that is why there is a broad spot. And then he, when he returned to Jagannath Puri, then he told Sarukta Muda Raya Ramananda and uh, Sarpam Bhattacharya, Oh, this is Kala Krishna Das. Now I, do, I reject him from me and now he can go anywhere. Then they sent him to Navadhi, Mayapur, in the service of Sachi Vaidya. In this way, he returned back to Jagannath Puri and then, or oh, same, same month, Radhyatra festival was there and big festival car, car festival was going on. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing, singing with his groups. What is uh, car festival? Shamrani will speak something because he is master of Radhyatra. <laughs> Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Salakaya Chaksuran Vitham Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Diksha Guru Dev Nichilila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pat Astotara 